Hey guys, it's Jamie back again with Simply Living It. I am joining you today to bring you a quick video and just kind of show you a glimpse inside our curriculum picks for the 2019-2020 school year. So these are just kind of the core curriculum pieces that I have chosen. I wanted to show them to you guys real quick, talk a little bit about them. I'm gonna try and keep this as short and sweet as I possibly can. If this is your first time here to my channel, I thank you for stopping by. I am a stay-at-home homeschooling mom. I have three boys and I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and become a part of our YouTube family. So I'm gonna go ahead and get straight to our picks, guys. So for my upcoming fourth grader, we're sticking with teaching textbooks. He used um, teaching textbooks math four this last year and finished that up. So we're gonna go ahead and move forward straight into math five for him. So we're gonna stick with that. We do use the discs. Um, I was able to get them at a pretty reasonable price and I can save them and reuse them with all three of my boys. So I haven't quite switched to the online version yet. I haven't made that leap because I still find these beneficial for our family as I can pass them on from, from child to child. And we haven't, um, knock on wood, we haven't broken any of the discs yet. So we're going to stick teaching textbooks, math five for my upcoming fourth grader. Now for his language, um, you might have caught on to this if you watched my recent unboxing video. If not, I'll link that above for you to watch as well as down in the description box. Um, I wanted to do an unboxing every time I get a new package or piece to our curriculum, but I am buying stuff constantly to add to our homeschool for the upcoming year that I decided I'm just going to simplify it and I'm just going to do um, an overview for each grade individually instead of boring you guys with these constant unboxing videos. <laughs> so if you watch that video, you already caught on to this. My fourth grader is going to be using Master Books Lessons for a Living Education 4. This is our very first time using Master Books in any way, shape, or form. So I am super excited about this. I've already gone through and looked through probably every page in this book, and I cannot wait to get started with this, you guys. We are coming from um, we started out with a Becca. Honestly, I've used probably just about, no, not just about anything. I've used a lot of different things. I am a curriculum junkie, so I switch things up a lot. I try things new. I've just made things way too complicated in our home, and I'm so excited for this coming school year because I really think I'm just at a different place. I think my kids are at a different place and I am excited and ready to try new things. So again, master books, language lessons for a living education for, for my upcoming fourth grader. Now for history, I am going to chunk these together and I may be a little bit behind the wagon on this, but I'm gonna kill two birds with one stone. We are going to do America's Story One. So this is master books as well. This is going to be my fourth grader's history. And, spoiler alert, I'm going to use this as well for my upcoming sixth grader. I purchased two teacher's guides and I've got one book here. So we are just gonna go ahead and take care of both of them at once. And I will just continue to move them up together as we can, as it works. Now, if I find that some of this stuff in America Story One has already been taught to my oldest child, I'm gonna go ahead and let him just kind of breeze through it and we'll pick up together on America's Story 2. Now I did purchase this teacher's guide and I do intend to try and stick to all the worksheets, but I can't promise that we're gonna get all of them done. So like I said, I did purchase the book and I also purchased the teacher's guide, which if you are not familiar with Master Books, this has your lesson plan, um, this has your worksheets and everything inside of it. So the teacher guide has the kids' worksheets inside of it. It's not just a book necessarily for the teacher. This has their worksheets as well. This big book here, America's Story One, this is just the reader. This is what I will read to my children or they will read um, for their lessons. So just a little side note there, if you're not familiar with Master Books, it is a little bit different than some um, curriculums that I've used in the past. So again, I'm going to do America's Story One for my upcoming fourth grader and my upcoming sixth grader. We're gonna chunk it together. I'm gonna to see how it works and we'll play it by ear. Obviously this stuff is subject to change depending on how it's working for our home. But as for right now, this is what I have planned and kind of lined out. So we'll see how it goes. So just a brief touch on history as well, a little side note on that. I have not really 
gone heavy into history here at home because our boys are part of a co-op. We belong to a co-op that we um, go to in the winter and in the spring. And so they really do get a lot of history through co-op. They get a lot of science through co-op. Um, so that's not something that I'm necessarily hit too heavy here at home, but I want to start doing that and making it fun. And that is part of why I chose America's Story 1. And like I said before, it might be some repeat stuff for my oldest, but I'm going to go ahead and just fill it out and kind of see how things work. I'm going to see if it's something that is interesting to him. If not, then we'll go ahead and bump him up to America Story 2 um, and just kind of see where we go from there. But for now, I'm going to just, like I said, make things easier on myself, make it more of a family fun interactive thing with us working and, and reading through the stories together as a family instead of um, splitting everybody up because of their age. And just a spoiler alert, I'm not sure if you follow me on Instagram, um, but if you don't, go follow me, Simply Living It. I posted a picture um, just a couple days ago. We actually did go ahead and do a little bit of a trial run for our history. I just wanted some relaxing time in the afternoon with my boys where we just sat down on the couch and read together. And we did do America Story 1, the first lesson, and so far... It was a hit, even for my youngest. He was having fun looking at the different types of homes that the Indians built, and that was kind of what we worked on for our first day, and we really liked it. So we'll see how it goes, but that's what we'll be doing for history. Elementary Bible and English Grammar. Now, I intentionally purchased this for my upcoming sixth grader, but after going through this when I received it in the mail, I love this you guys I love this so you're gonna think I'm crazy but I purchased this also to use for my fourth grader because this is so the Bible is the root of this and that's what I want I I've tried to figure out a way to incorporate the Bible into our homeschool I've tried sitting down and just reading you know a chapter out of my Bible or a verse and let's talking we would spend some time focusing on a particular verse but this you guys I love this Illustrations Family Bible Stories book. It is so beautiful. It's so big. I don't know if you can tell. Big, beautiful. The pages are just beautiful. I love it. I think my boys are going to love it. And I went ahead and did the teacher's guide as well. I do need to purchase another one of these teacher's guides because for some goofy reason, I purchased two Bibles <laughs> instead of two teacher's guides. So I have a friend who actually is switching over to master books this year as well. So she went ahead and is going to put that to use. But I do need to purchase another teacher's guide because I want to use this for my sixth grader as well. And this is something there again, I want to sit down as a family before we start school. I want this to kind of be part of our morning basket routine where we are going to sit down and we are going to read a Bible story together and then we're going to answer some questions. So I know this is intended to be kind of a standalone thing for your fourth through sixth grader. I don't know if there's many people that lump them together, but right here, I'm going to. I love, love, love that the Bible being introduced to this. And I know it's introduced in many ways and you focus on different verses and different characters of the Bible in these books as well, which is one of the reasons I chose master books. But this is more like a study for me. And that's what I want for my boys is some kind of like a Bible study. It's like their own Bible study. We can go through together and we can learn together and I love it. So just for instance, um, day five would be, you would have a verse of the week. So in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Okay, then you have a few vocabulary words, then you have some genres of the Bible, and then you have some comprehension and memorization that you're gonna do. Now, I don't know that I'm gonna complete every one of these worksheets with my son, but I do know that whatever the lesson plan is for the day, I want to read that Bible story and I want to go through this with him. Whether we don't answer the questions necessarily on paper, I would love to just do it verbally. I would love to just make it a discussion that we do as a family, go through the vocabulary words together. Let's look up these words together. Let's discuss their meanings. Let's talk about law. Let's talk about the Old Testament versus the new. Like, I just feel like it's gonna be such a good thing to add to our home. So whether we use all these worksheets or not, I don't know, but I love the idea of what this is going to bring into our family and our homeschool. So that is why I purchased both crazy maybe okay and then just two more things here really quick this book 
I purchased one of the flash sales, Life in the Great Ice Age. I purchased this book because I want to do kind of a unit study on it. So my oldest hasn't really learned anything about the Ice Age. So what fun would it be to just implement this again with the family, with all three of my boys? Let's go through and read this book, part of our morning basket or whatever. It's got beautiful pictures, all kinds of descriptions, and just tells you about life in the Great Ice Age. So I think it's an awesome book. I did purchase that. It's from Master Books as well, and that's something we will be reading just like with anything. Last but not least, okay, these are not Master Books. These were a good old Walmart find. Okay, <laughs> I'm taking a poll, and I want you guys to answer in the comment section down below. I was not homeschooled, okay? So I'm sorry, but I do feel like there is one thing that some of you homeschooled people missed out on. And that was the old school Oregon Trail game. You guys, this thing is making a comeback, but it's not the original. It's not the legit. They have the board game. It's not the same. I remember so well sitting in class on those big old huge white box computers and the screens were black and the wording was, depending on the screen you were at, it was either yellow or orange. And the Oregon Trail game was the best thing ever. Okay, I found these books, The Oregon Trail, Alone in the Wild. If you were homeschooled, this is something you missed out on. I tell you, it was probably the best part of public school. <laughs> okay, maybe not, but I loved it. I loved it. It's a great memory. So these books I found at Walmart. Like I said before, I love them. They're so much fun. So it's kind of an interactive thing. So it says, um, this one's titled Alone in the Wild, Choose Your Own Trail. There is a whole selection of them. It says you can find out more going to OregonTrail.com. Six dollars at Walmart. You could probably find them on Amazon too. I haven't done the research. But what I'm meaning by interactive, first of all, let me show you the map of the Oregon Trail. So this is your first page. Luckily, we live pretty close to the, not pretty close, but a few hours from the Oregon Trail Interpretive Center. Which that is something we have had the pleasure of visiting before, but I think I would like to do that again after we read some of these books. Um, my son was really stuck on reading like Diary of a Wimpy Kid and stuff like that. I would way rather him read this. So you're getting to choose. You're the character in the book and you're getting to choose kind of your fate, your destiny. So I don't mean to, I'm, I'm looking at the page here to show you. Okay, here's an idea. Um, see how it has two different um, pages that it'll tell you to turn to? I'm gonna read it to you because I can't read backwards and upside down. So it says, to search for your wagon train, turn to page 115. To make a fire, turn to page 138. So you have to choose in the situation or the scenario that this has put you in, that the author has put you in, in this previous chapter, you're going to decide, am I going to search for my wagon train or am I gonna make a fire and stay put? So you're getting to choose and you're not gonna read it like a traditional book. You're gonna move on to the next page where it coordinates to what you're wanting to do or the actions you're wanting to take. So if I want to search for my wagon train, I'm gonna to turn to page 115 and I'm gonna pick up reading at page 115. So this can be kind of confusing, but this is where, this is 115, and this is where I'm gonna start reading, okay? And then you're just gonna keep reading. Oh look, it's a page and a half, and then it has a little scenario here. Then it says, to add more wood to the fire, turn to page 27, or to let the fire die out, turn to page 62. So in the very back of the book, it tells you, which this was just like the game that we used to play on the computer. It's talking about the dangers that they lived in clear back in the 1800s during the Oregon Trail time. So a guide to the trail. You have dangers, different sicknesses, okay? You wanna read this before you start. Different sicknesses, bad weather, things that can happen in bad weather. So like the previous question, do you wanna let your fire die out? Well, you might wanna think about that again if you had read this and thought of the different um, conditions, the different bad weather, the different sicknesses. Um, starvation, frostbite, dehydration, shelter, animals, and then finding your way. So these are something, this is not just for my fourth grader. I bought three of these. I have another one, but it's uh, packed away in the camper because we're going on a, an adventure. So we're going to bring one of them with us. This one is called The Wagon Train Wreck, and this one is Alone in the Wild. These are Oregon Trail books. Like I said, they're interpretive. You, your child kind of gets to pick and choose 
which way kind of their fate, so to speak. I think they're awesome. I don't know if I said before, but they're, I think they were $6 and some odd cents. So that is the core of what we are going to be using for our homeschool for my upcoming fourth grader for the 2019, 2020 school year. Those are the core things, guys. That's not everything that is um, subject to change. We do have the Life of Fred readers, which I've shown you before. We have our nature journals. I'm gonna go ahead and link that video up above because there are things that I'm not showing you here, but these are the main, this is what we're gonna kind of bounce off of. This is gonna be our structure, our core, this is it. What I just showed you, that's what we're going to be sticking to. Now stay tuned and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already because I will be posting our curriculum for my upcoming first grader. I will be posting um, my full curriculum for my upcoming sixth grader as well. So if that's something you wanna see, please hit that subscribe button and stick around. I'd love to have you uh, be a part of our YouTube family and um, I don't know, just offer all kinds of encouragement through the different videos that I bring and maybe some helpful tips um, and different advice as far as homeschooling. I have been doing this for almost seven years now, which seems crazy, but we learn every year, right? We learn new things, we learn as we go, and I am still learning. So if you were the original, the original Oregon Trail game lover like myself, you have to give this video a thumbs up. Post it in the comments down below. Let me know because I know I'm not the only one out there. I was discussing this on the way home from a water park yesterday with some of my friends. Funny fact was they had no idea what I was talking about because they were homeschooled. <laughs> so they didn't get that love for that game like I did. So definitely, definitely let me know. I know I'm not the only one out there. The original Oregon Trail game on the computers in your computer lab room. I know there are some of you out there. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will be sure to bring more curriculum hauls in the future, guys. Have a great day.